I want to go to Rod McKenzie, who's the Managing Director of Policy and Public Affairs at the Road Haulage Association. Good afternoon, Rod. Good afternoon, Amal. Um, can you give us a sense, as someone who's uh, closer to the uh, industry than most of us are, of just I mean, how shocked you are by it? I mean, how common is this kind of incident? Well, uh, this is absolutely horrific, isn't it? And our, our it's un- thoughts it's are unbearable. very much with, with, with the, the families of the poor victims of this appalling tragedy, uh, which is frankly the stuff of nightmares. And it's the stuff of nightmares because you have to think about what the conditions were like inside that uh, that trailer. It looks from the pictures I've seen as though it's a refrigerated uh, trailer, so this would have been cold, perhaps freezing, dark, uh, possibly running out of air, no sanitation, no food, and given the likely uh, route, uh, perhaps they were in the back of this uh, trailer for five days. Oh. Uh, and that is truly horrific. It's, I mean, it's unconscionable to think what they, um, they went through. Um, can you give us a sense of the scale, as you understand it, of this problem? How much... How many, I mean, this is obviously um, a particularly horrific case, but to what extent are British ports subject to these sorts of attempts, as far as you understand it? Well, well, it's a, a nightmare that never goes away. And, and, and Leslie was sort of describing our view of, of the likely route, which I can come to in a moment. But, of course, most of the attention is focus, focused on the short straits, Dover, Calais. And uh, in the past, we've had uh, migrant gangs, often very highly organized and very exploitative of, of, of people who are just desperate to get to the UK. Uh, they take all their money and then they corral them onto the backs of trucks, uh, often breaking in without the driver's knowledge, uh, sometimes by taking off entire doors rather than, uh, you might imagine, just breaking in. uh, They've become highly skilled at doing that and getting uh, people on board. But the authorities, too, have become highly skilled on the uh, Dover Calais run, and there are a number of monitors and checks that are used to discover if there are people in the back of lorries. And so for that reason, I suspect um, a, a new route has opened up and is being opened up. What do you suspect uh, that new route to be, if you don't mind me well, asking, Rod? Uh, this is speculation, but from what we know, we can piece together some of the earlier steps. We know that the lorry started off in Bulgaria uh, and ended up in Hollywood. It, Hollyhead. It's very likely, therefore, that the crossing was via Cherbourg in France to Rosslare in the Irish Republic, and then from uh, the Irish Republic to Holyhead, and, and then on, on from there. Now, that journey uh, would take, you know, perhaps three, perhaps five days. So it's a long time to be in those sort of conditions I've just described. Uh, and as I say, fewer checks than the Dover Calais run. So for an exploitative um, alleged people smuggler or people smuggling gang, uh, that uh, would be, no doubt, uh, attractive to their and, and cynical Rod, view. And, Rod, as you, you mentioned the gangs. I mean, let's just get... It's, it's, it's obviously a, a, an appalling, unconscionable human and emotional story here, in practical terms as well, which we've got to discuss. This sort of thing happens because there are established criminal gangs who presumably make their money not just through people smuggling but other things like drugs and arms, who offer inducements through smugglers to people in desperate situations in... Uh, faraway countries, uh, and who basically think that they can get people in through British ports. That's what's going on at some basic level, isn't it? There are established routes and established gangs. That's absolutely right. And we've seen one or two rare instances of of boats or or, or little little craft being used to cross the sea. But of course, for most people, um, the the more likely route is on the back of a lorry. Uh, and, And the way that they break into those lorries or get on board the lorry, sometimes that unfortunately does involve uh, you know criminal activity by uh, by people who might be driving the lorry but in many cases drivers are not aware that their vehicle has been broken into perhaps at night perhaps many miles from the port uh, and um, uh, and then on the short straights uh, if they're lucky as, as they would see it they get into Britain and of course in, in doing that they probably parted with their entire uh, money to these uh, People smugglers who are clearly evil uh, and utterly disregard human life uh, and the conditions that they're putting these people through. Indeed. Rod McKenzie, thank you very much indeed. That's Rod McKenzie, who's the Managing Director of Policy and Public Affairs at the Road Haulage Association.